um, if you feel if you feel uncomfortable, please uh, change your username to a dummy name and uh, as well as switch off your video. Yeah, uh, feel, uh, please feel free. We are here to learn. We are here to grow our, our knowledge and uh, um, as well as network. Uh, so um, please feel free. So during... So um, during today's event, during today's tutorials, we will have two sessions. So the first session will be introduction to R, and then we'll be we'll break out, we'll break out into different breakout sessions. We will have a practical exercise, yeah, and then followed by a second session on data management, and then also break out into the same groups uh, for another practical session. And then uh, if, you, if you have any question, you would have, have asked any question um, during the tutorials, uh, please use the chat, uh, please use the chat so as to avoid um, too much commotion uh, as Nomi will be, will be sharing her knowledge with us. Um, yeah, kindly use the chat. Uh, so we'll have a session where Nomi will answer all the questions. Yeah. Uh, so our... Trainer, sorry, our trainer today is Naomi Nganga. Naomi Nganga is a data analytics and visualization officer at International Center for Humanitarian Affairs. Uh, that's a section of the Kenya Red Cross. And she has BSc in uh, biostat biostatistics from Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Yeah, I, um, she's well experienced with R, uh, using R in the health and uh, in the health in the health sector. Yeah, uh, uh, Naomi, uh, please uh, you may go ahead and share your screen, and we may start with the first session. Can you uh, can you all hear me? Yes, you can, Lucy. Awesome. Let me stop sharing my screen. Know me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is Naomi Nganga and I work, as Lucy has mentioned, I work with the Kenya Red Cross and a department called uh, International Center for Humanitarian Affairs. We do a lot of research work and policy work. Yeah, and as Lucy has mentioned, uh, I use an, uh, R a lot in my daily activities, which mostly entails uh, doing data cleaning, analysis, visualization, mapping, and also making dashboards. And we collect a lot of data on crisis. Uh, for example, floods, droughts, pandemics, uh, COVID, DL, desert locust infestation, and some of the things that we look for when we are cleaning data includes, for example, looking for things like outliers. For example, you might find that someone has mentioned, for example, they have like uh, 50 children, while the average is like five. So definitely that is an outlier. And also looking for duplicated records for example, maybe someone can give you, uh, they can have two names, but when you look at the ID, it's the same. So that's something that uh, we flag out and send the data to the people who are in the field to verify that. Other things that we do in data manipulation includes uh, renaming variables to make sure that the names make sense and also summarizing the data because uh, some of these people are in the field and so Maybe they are not really interested in a lot of the data that you've collected. They just need like a summary of uh, what is informing them. Maybe summary by group of people. For example, if they just want to know how many people have received, for example, cash transfers, voucher transfers, uh, how many people have been uh, house, how many people their houses have been damaged, uh, things like that. And I love R because uh, it's good. Uh, it's open source, so it's free. 
And also, you can do a lot of things. For example, if you're collaborating with other people, you can do, uh, you can create your project in version control. You can do modeling stars. You can do mapping. You can make dashboards in R. So it's a really uh, versatile tool. And so for the session of today, we are going to focus on uh, data manipulation. So things like, as I have mentioned earlier, um, creating new variables, how do you rename uh, those variables? How do you create a summary by uh, certain groups? How do you like maybe subset your data and things of those sorts. And so I'm hoping the prerequisite for the training was that uh, you have R and R Studio installed. So I don't know how many people have done that, but if you've not installed R and R Studio, maybe you can just follow through my tutorial. I hope that's okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, are you able to see it? Yes. Okay. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with our studio environment, but uh, it looks like this, although this is in dark mode. Yeah. Um, so we have four windows. Uh, this is, uh, let me just highlight, this is like the source where you type in your, you can just load your script, write your commands and run your codes. And then we have the console, this one that has like an arrow just below the source code where uh, you can be able now to run your commands directly. So in the source code, you have to hit run when you're running the commands, but in the, in the console, you can just type uh, your commands directly. For example, if you just do two plus two and you hit enter, it will give you like the results, which is four. And you also have um, the environment whereby it stores all your objects. For example, if you've load uh, your data sets, you can be able to see them here. If you have uh, other vectors, also you can be able to see them here. And then we have uh, this other window for files where you can see all the files in your working directory. You can, it also has like a plot window whereby if you plotted uh, some graphs, they will appear here. The packages where you can just uh, uh, see all the packages that are already installed in your, in your R environment. And you can also add, install other packages from this section. And we also have um, the help window whereby you can just, if you type, uh, for example, you need any assistant, for example, in a package, let's say deployer. Sorry. You should be able to appear here and to see all the help. Yeah. We also have some uh, cheat sheets within R. So for example, if you go to help, and go to cheat sheet, you can be able to find some cheat sheets. For example, in data transformation with the deployer, you can download that. Data visualization with ggplot, you can also download that cheat sheet. Uh, web application with Shiny. There's so many cheat, cheat sheets here that you can download and maybe be able to learn from. Sour, sour. So um, just uh, some basics in R is that uh, this, the arrow here, it's called a prompt. These are just very basic things, yeah? So this is called a prompt. It tells you that uh, you can now be able to type in your command and execute it. So for example, if you can just do simple calculation, let's say you just want to find maybe the log of 10, it shows you that uh, it has been executed and now you can type in another command, but we have something else called the continuation prompt. For example, if you type two plus and you don't complete that command, you'll get a plus here. This is, it shows you that uh, your code is not complete and maybe you just need to add something for it to be successfully uh, completed. So if I add there something like six, you'll be able to get uh, your answer, which is eight. So you can always check out for these 
for this prompt, the the R prompt and also the the continuation prompt that tells you that uh, your command is not complete. Yeah, and in R we use uh, something called commands, which is basically made up of two parts, the object part and the function part. So the object part is where you store your data. For example, here, uh, value, value is my object and two times four, this is times, two times four is my function here. So what I'm basically saying is store two, two times four in an object called value. And if I do this and I run this value, I should be able to get the answer, which is eight. So most of the times when we'll be doing our, um, we'll be writing our codes and running the analysis, uh, you'll always see that uh, we have two parts in every function, uh, two parts in every command, one that indicates the object and the other part that indicates uh, the function. And uh, one thing to note that is when you're, re you're naming this, um, when you're naming the, the, the object, you need to be careful because it's in, it is case sensitive. For example, if I put here capital V, I will get an error that tells me this uh, value with capital V cannot be found because R is case sensitive. Another thing that you need to note is that you cannot uh, name an object with uh, with numbers. For example, if I, or you cannot start your names with numbers. For example, if I do two, two, two value, two value, again, I'll be able to get an error. Yeah, because it's not like the right format of naming your objects. So when you're naming your objects, you have to use uh, letters. The other thing that you need to, to also remember is when you're naming your object, you, you don't put spaces unless you want to put them in quotes, yeah? So if I do, for example, if I name this object value space uh, list, please tell me if I'm too fast. I can slow down, please, okay. I'll also get an error because of this spacing. So what you can do, if you want to separate your names with uh, uh, with space, you can just replace the space with, let's say, an underscore. And now it should be well named. Or if you want to maintain your space, you can just use the forward quote. I don't know what is the right name for that. Sorry about the background noise, but I just hope you can still hear me. Um, you can use the forward quotes. It's just below your escape, uh, escape, escape key on your computer. Yeah, you just use this double, you wrap them in this double forward quote. Now when you do that, you'll be able to, to, to store your function well. So if I just rename that, I'll be able to get the results of the function that I've calculated here. Yeah, and the other thing is just to introduce like the data types in R. Um, Broadly, we have two, two data types. We have uh, categorical data and you have numeric data, yeah? So in R, categorical data is subdivided into two. It can be a string, it can be character, sorry. It can be in character format, which is just like uh, names. For example, name Naomi, Lucy, like that. But you can also have it in factors where you assign like uh, some values into into those names. For example, let's say education level, you can assign a primary school, for example, uh, a value one, and then secondary school value two, maybe college value three, and maybe postgraduate value four. So that becomes a factor, anything that has a value attached to it. And then now we have just the numbers, yeah? And that is called a uh, numeric numeric uh, data types in, in R. So we have three data types. Street, uh, characters, we have factors, and we have, and we have numbers. The other one is just like things like dates. I think that is uh, 
is same almost in every other programming languages. So how do we create vectors in R? Today we're just doing simple things. So just creating a vectors in R, we use uh, something called concatenate, which is mostly written as C. So for example, in this case, what I'm saying is that put all these names in an object called first name, but we want to put them, we want to, to use concatenate so that everything will be, will be like uh, stored in one, in one list. So we use concatenate. So we'll have, uh, if I run this, and then I call this first name, I should be able to get my names that are stored in an object called first name. So another thing to note is that if you're storing a character, character objects, you'll put them or you wrap them in quotes. So in this case, we've wrapped all these names in quotes, but if you're going to store numbers, then you don't have to put them in quotes, you'll just type in the numbers. So for example, in this case, we are storing uh, these IDs and we are using concatenates here. If I just call ID, I'll be able to get all my IDs. You can also use uh, replicate, for example, if, um, you have a list that has the same things appearing several times. You can just use a replicate. For example, in this case, I can just say replicate, replicate, uh, let's say cap three times. So I'll get cap, 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 cap. So that's also another way that you can create a vector in R. So in this case, what I'm doing, I'm replicating. I want to assign gender to these names. So the first thing is that I created the first names and then I created their IDs. All these are different objects. Remember that. So we have one object that has first name, another object that has ID. And now we just want to assign gender to those objects. So what I do is that if I look at this, the first, uh, the first name is female, but the second, the third, and the fourth, these are males. So instead of just writing like male, 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 I can say replicate male three times. And then I add female. So if I run this and I call this command gender, I should be able to get my gender. Yeah, which is female, male, 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 female. Any question until that point? Do you have any question, Lucy, until that point? We don't have currently. Okay. Please proceed. Okay. So the other thing is that after creating your objects, after creating those vectors, you can combine those vectors into a data frame. And you can use a command called, uh, not command, but really a function called data.frame. Yeah. So in data.frame, you will just use data.frame and then you combine the first vector, which was first name, you combine the second vector, which was ID, and the third uh, vector, which was gender. And if you do this, and you store that in an object called maybe attendance list, then you just say head attendance list, you'll be able to see now all these vectors put together, initially they were like one dimension, but now they're in two dimension format. So we have the columns and we have the rows. So you will be able to see uh, the first name, the gender and the ID. You can also do use a function called class just to look at the class of these objects that you've created. And in this case, it will tell you that it's a data frame. Yeah, so, um, the other thing is, uh, if you just want to see, for example, some of the uh, some of all or all objects that are stored in your R environment, you can just use ls, and then you'll be able to see all the lists. Let me just type here for better visibility. Better visibility. Sorry, you'll be able to see uh, all the objects that are in my working directory. Yeah, if I want to remove all the objects in my working directory, I'll just, I can just say remove. 
no, let me start by removing maybe one object. For example, I want to remove uh, the one that the this data frame that we've just created, attendance list. I'll just say remove attendance list. And remember when you 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 you're running commands on your objects, you don't put them in quotes. What you put in quotes are what do I call them? What you put in quotes are the things that you're going to store in that object. Yeah? But when you're calling the object, you don't put the quotes. So if I say remove and I run the command ls to see all my objects, uh, this item attendance list is not there. But maybe sometimes you can just want to clear your working, you to clear your your working environment. And how you do that is you can say remove, or you can also use rm shortcut remove, and then you say list is equals to all objects in your working directory, which is now ls into bracket. So this will clear my working directory. So I don't have anything. If you look at my global environment, there's nothing there. And you can just confirm by running again ls. Yeah. And there's nothing there. So uh, just a quick exercise uh, is maybe you can just create um, a data frame that has, uh, let's say, just some few names or, or just some few list of your family members. For example, you can just have uh, two, sorry about that, I'm, at, I'm working from home. <laughs> so you'll be able to hear Kudama <laughs> Kuku in the background. <laughs> okay. So there's some noise in the background, don't mind. Uh, so uh, you can create a data frame that has uh, just a list uh, of your family members. It can be like just two rows and three columns. Maybe the first column indicating their names, the second column maybe indicating the age, and the third column maybe indicating maybe their favorite spot of food. We can do that in like three minutes, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, so please let's check in after three minutes. If you're done, you can just write on the chat box like you're done. And then you can proceed with the other section on now data manipulation. I cannot be able to see the chat, so please you let me know, Lucy. Okay. I hope it's clear to everyone. I hope the task is clear to everyone. Just a small data frame with two rows, uh, one column indicating the name, the other column indicating maybe the age and the other column indicating maybe the favorite spot or food. Once you have the data frame, we can continue. Normally we have one question. Uh, do you want to answer it right now or do you want to answer it later during the Q&A section? I can answer it. Please read it. Okay, so the question is, um, what is the difference between, so it is uh, an object
well let me let me see. it's it's an object name called vec and it has um it has the object name is called vec and then it has uh one unit which is a numeric value number 23 and then we have a dollar sign. So there is that, that's the first part. And then the, the, other, the other one is another object called VEX. Uh, with, so dollar sign begins with dollar signs, two dollar signs. And then VEX uh, assigned to, the, the VEX objects contains number 23. So the difference is one has been concatenated with C, uh, 23. And in, in, enclosed is okay. See, and then enclosed uh, twenty three, and then now the other one is now with just two dollar signs, and then the okay the object has been assigned two dollar signs, and it contains the value twenty three. Am I clear or I? Okay. Now me let me let me share it with you separately. Sorry, but what I can just say is that if you're going to put, let's say, two things, more than one thing in a, in that vector, for example, you've called it VEC. Let me just uh, just type here. For example, if you call something VEC, yeah, and then you put 23, it will be stored. But if you put, if you're going to separate it with a comma then you put you need to put it in the concatenate function for example if you have more than two more than one thing that you're going to store in this vector you need to use now the concatenate function so if i put for example 23 com 24 comma 25 here i will get an error so i need to put to put those things in a concatenate in a concatenate function because it's more than one. So to solve that, I'll just do VEC. I hope you can see. I yes, we can. can. See my yeah, I'll just put VEC concatenate then 23, 24, 25. And that will, be, will have solved the, the problem. So I hope his question is answered because I see that, all right here, the first thing is, it's similar thing. It's only that he has put the second one in the concatenate. He has wrapped it in the concatenate function. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I hope it's answered. Martin, I hope it's clear. If it's not, uh, please, uh, you can you can explain further on the chat. Okay. I think my, um, we can proceed. We can proceed with the second session. Uh, have we managed to do the small task? We can still proceed to the second session. You can introduce the data manipulation. Okay, so in the data manipulation, we are going to use uh, the deployer package, which mostly has like five verbs sorry it has five verbs the first verb is called rename the second one is uh, select the other one is filter the other one is um, group by and the other one is mutate so to start with because most of the times you are not going to like to create uh, a data frame uh, on your computer maybe you'll be reading data from other in other formats, for example, Excel, it can be in Stata format, it can be in, uh, you can also read it from SAS, whichever format that uh, your data comes in. So you can do that in R. The first thing is that you need to, to set your working directory and how you get to know the directory that you're currently working from is to use the getwd function. So if I run that, um, it will tell me that uh, my working directory is this one. C users admin, yeah, all this. But let's say my working directory was something else and or was somewhere else and I want to change the path. You can just copy your path. For example, you just go to where your data sets are stored. You copy your path and then you come, you say set WID and you paste it here. 
enclosed in quotes. In R, you can either use either forward slash or you can use two backward slash, but I prefer using forward slash so I can just change this and just replace it with the forward slash in selection. Yeah, I'll just set my working directory to this path. Okay, that's a notification. So the other thing is that you need to load the packages that you're working with. So I'm hoping that you've all installed the Tediverse package, which has a deployer package in it. It has TDR, it has ggplot that are you, we are not going to use the, all of them in this session. In this session, we're only going to use Deplier, but maybe in the other sessions that we'll be having, you might find yourself using ggplot for maps or TDR also for data transformation or just read R reading, maybe a data set in R format. So we are going to load our package and how we load the package is by doing library, library and then the package that you're using enclosed in quotes. So if I do library deplier, if I click to packages on this pane, if I just click to packages and type deplier here and I find, I should be able to see that it's ticked, meaning that it is loaded. But you can have your packages installed in R, but they're not loaded. So if you want to use those packages, you need to load them using library deploy, ah, library and then the name of the package. Sometimes you might load uh, packages that have the same functions. For example, deploy has a function called rename and rename can also be found in another package. Let's say um, there's a, there's a, there's a special package I can't remember its name, but it also has a it also has a function rename. So if both packages are loaded, you need to specify whichever command that you're using. For example, if it is rename, you won't use rename from which package because both of them have the same the same commands. So and how you specify is just you just need to call your package. For example, deploy. And then you put double colon and then the command, which is, for example, rename. So when you're executing uh, this command, R will know that uh, it's going to use rename from this package, deplier, and not rename from the other special package. Okay, higher. So, after setting your working directory, the other thing, and after setting your working directory and loading the package, you just now need to, to read in your data. We are going to use um, accident data from the humanitarian data exchange platform. They have so many data sets there, over 15,000 data sets, which are free. You can just download and any data set that you want and just use it for your practice. So in this case, we're just going to use uh, a data set on accidents in Kenya uh, on that happened in the year 2017 and 2016. I will share with you the data set. Let me just uh, put that in the chat. Lucy, how do I put these data sets in the chat now? How do I share the data sets? I can see the chat. Um, below your screen, there isn't a session. Uh, well, uh, you can send the you can send the data uh, via the email. Can you send yeah, the data to my email? <clears throat> Sorry, hi guys. I think you can send the data to uh, the organizers and then they'll be able to blast it out to participants. Yes. But now I have to like email 
right? You uh, yes. After the after the after the after the tutorial, you can share it. You can share it with us, and then we can, we'll share it with the, all the participants. Okay. Okay. All right. So we are going to load this data set called Accidents Kenya Accident Database. Yeah, we have it in two formats. One is in CSV format, and the other one is in XLS format. So reading CSV data, you can just use a command called read. read that command it's like just the path to where your data set is stored and also the name of the data set so here the name is kenya accident database.csv and also we have some other um, we have some other options that you can add so here i've added a function uh, called string as factors is equals to false so that uh, all all my records when they are when they're added in or when they're read in, they won't have like a value attached to it. So it will be just like uh, in character format, no values are attached to it. So I'm going to store that data in an object called accident 2016. And now you can be able to see that it's loaded and it's found in my environment. The other data format is in XLS. For reading XLS data sets, you need to use a package. So, and the package is called read Excel. And because I don't want to like to load the package, I can just call the function from this package because the package is already installed. So I'll just type in the package name and then the command. Then the first function, the first, yeah, the first part of the function, again, is still similar to read read.csv so it contains the the path and the name of the data set and it also has an option whereby if your data has multiple sheets you can specify the sheets the sheet name of that uh, data so for example in this case i just want to use uh, the data that is stored in sheet for 2017 i don't want to use the other sheets for example 2015 2016 i just want this one and I'm going to store this in an object called accident 2017. So we can explore our data by using view and view is capital V. So view into bracket and then you just type in the name of your data frame. In this case, we just want to view data to view accident 2017 data. So another window will pop up. So you can see that we have uh, we have we have 740 entries. It's written down here: 740 entries in 16 columns. If you want to see the names of the columns, for example, if you just want to see if this data contains a column that you wanted to analyze, you can just type names and then the name of your data frame. Sorry, let me move this. The name of the data frame. So these are the names of my data frame. You can see um, some of them have spaces between them. And so when I'll be calling these, these, these columns, I'll need to use the forward quote that I mentioned earlier and not just um, calling it directly. So sometimes you can just want to see like uh, maybe the top five columns, I mean the top five uh, rows, you use head. And then the name of your data set, which in this case is accidents 2017. Maybe you just want the five, the first five columns. So you will be able to get, and also the good thing with this one is that it tells you if the data set, if it tells you the type of the columns. So in this, in this case, it's telling you that time, 24 hours is in character format, base is in character format, county, everything is in character format. Yeah, so maybe you might decide that you want to change this time, 
time 24 hours into another type, for example, uh, the date time type. And you can also use a function called uh, summary. Can you summary your data? And here you'll be able to see that uh, all your columns or variable have been summarized. So it tells you the length, it tells you the class and also the mode. So all these are character formats, are in character formats. And the ones that are numeric are summarized. So the ones that are numeric, you'll be able to find the mean, the first quantile, the median, um, the maximum value, how many NAs are there. Yeah, so it's like it describes your data well, such that now you can be able to see, for example, if it is uh, an outlier, for example, okay, oh, it's not like a good column to do that. Um, for example, if we had another variable here, let's say number of people who've been affected, you can be able to see like maybe the average, the average number is, let's say five, but maybe the maximum number is like uh, 10,000. So you can be able to guess if there is an outlier or not. You can also be able to see, for example, how many number of uh, missing values you have in your data set. That is if it is in numeric format, but if it is in character format, it will just give you the length and the class. I hope it's okay until that part. So the other thing is how do we add a new variable to the data frame that we have? So looking at this data set, uh, we have all this information about the county that the accident happened, uh, which base it was, what time, uh, the type of car that was involved, um, the accident briefs, was it hit and run, was it um, head on collision, uh, the name of the victim, in most cases it's unknown because most people don't want to give in their names. The gender of the person, of the victim, was it female, was it male, the age and the course code. Uh, the victim, was it a passenger or driver and the date when it happened. So let's say we want to add another variable that just says that this is Kenya's data. So how do we do that? You will, you will use a mutate function. This is now the, the deplier verbs that I was talking about. It's one of the deplier verbs that I was talking about. So mutate has two parts. The first part is where you input your data or the name of your data frame. So in this case, we are going to use accidents 2017 data. And the second part is where now you put uh, the function. So you want to create a variable called country. And that variable, that's like the variable name, you want to put the name, the records that you want to, to be stored in that variable, it's just Kenya. Yeah, so you just want to populate it with the name Kenya. If we do this, and to view your data, you'll be able to see that uh, this variable has been added. Yeah, it's, it's that simple. It's that simple, by the way. So how do we do this now? Uh, I wanted you people to, to just do like a small exercise on this and um, just create a variable that indicates that this data is owned by the HDX human data, humanitarian data exchange. But you can just do it together now that you, you don't have the data. So you can just do 2017, then we say mutate. Sorry. We call then our data frame, which is accidents. 2017, what do we want? We want to create a, a column called um, maybe owner. And we want to populate it with uh, HDX. So if I run this, we should get an additional column. 
that's populated with HDX. So it tells us that this data is owned by HDX. Sorry, I was using I was using Control Enter to to run, but you can always use uh, you can always click here run to still do the same thing. But in this case, I'm just using Control Enter. So there are other ways of generating uh, your variables. For example, you can just generate from already existing variables. And in this case, maybe you're going to combine mutate with other functions. So in this case, let's say we just want to, uh, to create another variable that contains now the full names. So because you cannot, you cannot, when you're visualizing your data, you cannot put like an F in a graph, you need to put like female and male. So we just want to correct this and add the complete, um, the complete name. And how do we do that? Sorry, my internet is unstable, but hope you can still hear me. So what you can do is we use the if else command. It's an additional command. We use if else other than mutate, we'll also use if else. So in this case, what I'm going to do is um, in my data set, which is accident 2017, I'm going to create a new variable called gender one, whereby if gender is equals to F, then it will be named female. Otherwise, it will be named male. Hope we are okay until that point. And if I do that, I should be able to get an additional column whereby wherever there's an F, it's female, wherever there's an M, it's male. The other way you can also just generate a variable is maybe you just want to, to concatenate two variables or just put them together. And how you do that, you just use a paste function. Again, in addition to the mutate function that uh, we, we have. So here we are going to say, um, create a new variable called location. And this location will contain data from a variable called road and a variable called place. And the way that you're going to combine those uh, data sets is that you're going to use a separator called com a, a, a comma. That's how you're going to separate this data such that someone can know that these two uh, data are records from maybe two different variables. But sometimes maybe you just want to separate using a space so under you, this separator option, you can just indicate, you can just remove um, the, the comma and just put a space. But in this case, I just want to use a comma. So if you run that, you should be able to see an additional column. Please tell me if I'm too fast, call location. And in this location, it contains data on space. It contains data on road and also place. So we have, for example, just the first, the first one, the road is Nairobi Busia Road, and the place that the accident happened is Kasagam Flyover. So those are different ways that you can generate uh, new variables in R. Any okay. question on creating new variables in R? If there are no questions, we can continue. Yes, we have no question currently. We can proceed. Okay. So the other thing is that maybe, for example, in this case, if I can just do names, if I just want to look at the names of my data frame, just I, I'll just say names, then name of my data set. You will see that some of these names don't make sense. For example, uh, this date, date, DD, month, year. If you look at the format, it's wrong. Uh, let me just open. If you look at this format that has been specified, it's wrong because it starts with the year and then the month and then the date. So maybe we might want to rename this, this column because it's somehow uh, misleading. And how do we do renaming in R? It's still also using a deployer verb called rename. Still very easy to use, same as uh, mutate. The first 
part of the function, again, you just need to put uh, the data set name. And now the second part is now where you put uh, this part is you say uh, the new name is equals to the old name. So it's not the other way, like the old name is equals to the new name, but it's how you want it to be called is equals to how it was called previously. So in this case, we are just remaining, renaming brief accident details to details. If I run this, please take note that because this name has uh, it had spaces within it. That's why we are using these forward quotes. But if it was it was it it was just like one name. For example, if it was separated by an underscore, that's like just one word. There was no need of using the the forward quotes. So I hope it's renamed. If we just go back to this. it yeah it's already renamed so we have now a column called details so how you rename you can either decide to use to rename it directly like you don't have to wrap the names in quotes or you can also decide to put the names in quotes because we've already renamed this we cannot uh, rename it again we'll get an error so we'll use another column this one, the, the, the date, the one that I was talking about before. And we are just going to, to, to wrap the names in quotes. It will still perform the same, the same function. So there are two ways of doing it. You can either decide to put the names in quotes or you can decide to leave them the way they were. And so if I just do names instead of me searching. Yeah, you'll see that the date has been renamed from date, DD, month, year to just date. It's very simple. These things are simple as that. That's how easy R is. The learning curve for R is not that steep. So we can decide to rename another variable. Just looking at this, maybe we want to rename the name of the victim. So the same thing will just be uh, we call our data set, then rename. That's how the function is called. And then again, the first part contains the data set. And then the second part contain now the renaming. So we want uh, the name to be. No, for, sorry? Yes? Let no, me a minute. Uh, please allow me to interrupt you for a minute. Uh, okay. uh, everyone, we, we have, uh, Shalmith has posted. Uh, the data on, um, you can find it on the chat, via the chats, and also via a GitHub link that has been shared also via the chats. Kindly, if you're interested to looking at the data as uh, Naomi is proceeding with the tutorial, you may download the data from the chats. Okay, uh, you may proceed, Naomi, sorry for that. No, thank you so much, Shelmet, for that. Okay, so where are we renaming? So the first part, we were calling the name of the data set and then uh, the variable that you were going to rename is the name of the victim. So in this case, uh, our new name, uh, what do we call it? Let's just call it victim. Do we have, uh, we have a, a similar name. You can just call it name, names, underscore V, to be equal to the name of the victim. And, but because this name of the victim has space, we're going to wrap it in these forward, forward quotes. Yeah. And that's it. So if we just run this command again, we should be able to see that the name has changed. Now we have uh, this one, a variable called names underscore V. So that's how we rename uh, variables in R. But if you're not comfortable, uh, for example, maybe you think you might forget wrapping those uh, variable names in forward quotes, you can always wrap them all in, in the double quotes. So let's just do one more. Maybe rename course code. So we'll do the same thing, accidents. 
2017 rename and then our new name let's call it just codes to be equal to the old name which is course code so in this case we're going to put things everything in quotes and we'll still get similar results. So if we just run, mm. now Misha, uh, sorry for the interruption again. Uh, please refer back to your to the code where you did import your data into R so mm -hmm. that uh, beginners may see the syntax of the R code that you used to, yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that, yeah, okay. All so right, take it. Sorry, yes. Here's the code. But remember to change the path. Please don't copy paste code blindly. <laughs> Please understand what it does. So the first part is the command. The second part is the path where your data is stored. So for example, if you downloaded the data and it is in your downloads, it has to be indicated here. So you'll just go to the downloads, copy the path. So for example, just here, let me just do it. Click here, up, copy the path, and then come and replace it. Sorry. Uh, just copy the path and come and replace it here. Plus, also indicate the name of the data set. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you for that. We can proceed. Yes. All right. Okay. So, the other thing uh, after renaming, maybe you might want to select some part of your data set. For example, you just want uh, only the columns that make sense to you, or maybe the columns that you might want to analyze and not everything. So how do you select those columns? Again, you use a function called select. The first part of the function, it's the data set. Well, the other section of the function you will going to, you are going to indicate the columns that you you want to select so for example in this case i want to select uh, the base i want to select the details the month the hour uh, the vehicle involved maybe the victim i don't want the cross code and just the victim so if i select if i run this uh, this command i should be able to get a a data set another data set that's called uh, maybe a cumulative sum that just has the columns that I've, I've selected, which are these. So again, it's as simple as that. You can also use select to, to arrange your variables. For example, uh, in this case, let me just highlight here. For example, in this case, maybe you don't want your variables to start with time. Maybe you want it to start with county. Where did this accident happen? Or maybe you want it to start with um, the details. What happened? Maybe was it hit and run? Was it a head-on collision? And in that case, you can also use select to do that, whereby you just say, you, you write the object name where you want that data to be stored, and then select. The name of your data set, in this case, it's uh, accidents 2017. And then you want maybe the, you want your data to start with, let's say, victim. Yeah. So you can use another command called everything, victim and everything else, victim and everything and now if you look at the data set the first column will no longer be time 
but it will be the victim. So you can do this. You can maybe rearrange your data set to, to start with multiple, uh, maybe you don't have just, you have multiple columns that you'll want it to start with. So you can do victim and then you do, for example, details. And then you have, for example, maybe the, the month. That maybe the accident happened and then everything else. So you can just run that. And looking at the data set, those are the columns that are going to start. So you can use select either to just have like a subset of your data or you can use select also to rearrange your columns. Naomi, uh, Naomi, thank you for that. Yes. Uh, please allow me to interrupt you. Someone is lost. Uh, would you please um, slow the pace down so that our beginners may understand, may definitely understand what you're trying, what you're teaching us. Okay. You, may, you may recap, uh, you may recap, uh, you may recap the last, the last few things you've taught so that uh, one of our participants may catch up. All right, where are they, where, where now? From mutating, from creating new variable or where? Where, where are they lost from? Renaming the code, renaming the variables. You may start from the, yeah, yeah, yes. From renaming? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So for, ne for uh, renaming, we said uh, you use a command called rename. And the first part of that command is the data set. So you'll put here the data set. And then the second part of the command is how you want that variable to, to be renamed. So the first part, it's separated by an equal sign. So the first part, let me just write here. So it is rename, then data set. Then the first part is the new name of that data, of that variable, and the second part is the old name. So it's rename, data set, new, then the old variable name. So in this case, we are renaming uh, details, this a column called brief accident details to a name called details. And if I, just to store this in another, uh, because if I rename, I'll get an error. It's already renamed. Let me use another. Let me use another. Another variable. Let me just rename gender. So rename gender to maybe without an R. and the name of the data set. We want to store that in the same object. So if I rename this uh, object data set, sorry, okay. I forgot I had to post it like the real name. So if I rename this and to go back to your data set and look for a column called gender, you will not find this column called gender because it has been renamed to this gender without an R. I hope you're okay with that. Hi. The other thing was, something else that I mentioned was, you can either do this or you can use quotes. So for example, let's say I want to rename, because I cannot rename the same thing, it has already been renamed. Let me say I want to rename county or even road. I want to rename road. to something else, maybe RD. I can still use quotes, which will perform the same, same function. So it's a matter of preference. You can either decide to use, to, to use quotes, or you can decide just to rename it the way we've done this other one. You just indicate the new name and the old name, thus. We are good till there. The other thing was now on selecting variables. How do we subset our data? For example, you have a data set that has over 100 columns. 
and all of those columns are not important to you. How do we just select the columns that are of importance to you? We use a function called select. And select functions the same way as, or the, 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 the command options are the same as, as the previous commands that we've looked at. So you'll use the function select. Let me just type here. Select the name of the data set data set name. And then now the name of the variables that you want to select. It can be like a list. It can be one variable. So for example, var one, just that. It can be multiple variables. So you'll continue just adding here a list of all those variables that you want to select. Maybe var two, var three, var four. Or they can be more. So in this case, in our case here, I want to select var a variable called uh, base, details, month, hour, motor vehicle involved, and the victim. So I'll use my command select, the name of the data set, and all those variable names that I want to select. And I'm going to store them in another, in another object called axam. So I'm not going to I'm not going to replace the initial data set that I have because I might want to use it later. So I'm going to store this subset of my data in another object. It's always advisable not to replace your initial data set. So if I just look at this data set, you can just click on your environment, you can just click on that object and you will it will pop up. So this is like a subset of my data. Yeah, I can just look at the number of columns that I have using names, names function. And then I just get the names of my small data set. And I also say that you can use select, not only just to select a subset of your data set, but you can also use it to rearrange your data set. For example, in this case, let me use this small data set. You're starting with base sub, and then uh, with base, then details, then month, hour, but I might want it to start with the victim. So how do we do that? You just go to your command again, you use select, the name of the data set, and to just indicate victim. Additionally, you're going to use another command called everything. So you want to select victim. Victim is the variable that's going to be like the first variable and everything else will follow. Instead of me specifying all the other variables, let's say they were 100, I'll just say select victim, then everything. If I do that, and to look at the data, now the first column is the victim. Sour, sour. But if I just wanted again the column to start with the name victim, but I'm not interested in all the other columns. I just want to select victim and let's say uh, the month. Oops, sorry. And to look at it, I'll, I'll just have those two columns. I hope it's not confusing to anyone. So you can use select to, to subset your data and you can also use it to rearrange your data. Sour, sour. So the other thing is maybe you just want to sort your data. For example, you're sending, you're sending like a summary and that summary you have a um, let's say names. Let me, let me just take an example of this. Yeah, you just want to send like this summary, but uh, the man, sorry, I just sorted. But the column victim, it's not sorted. Like uh, we have maybe passenger cyclist, we have pedestrian, driver, but maybe someone might just want to see or just to have like a look at how many passengers have been uh, victims of accidents. So you will need to sort this column. 
how do you do that in R? We don't use a command called sort. I know previously we've used uh, like similar commands to the to, to what you want to do. For example, select and then use select, rename, then use rename. In this case, we are going to use so arrange. Yeah. And similar case, it's arrange. Then the name of the data set, data set name, and the column that you want to sort. So in this case, maybe we want to sort month. So this is the variable that you want to sort. So in this case, we want to sort the variable called month. And if I just run this, my variable month is sorted, but it's sorted, it's sorted in ascending order. So we have two, then three, four, five, until maybe December. So in some cases, you might want to sort your data in descending order. Sorry, and how you do that is you just need to wrap this variable. Let me just copy this to make it more understandable. Um, you just need to, to, to wrap this variable that you're sorting in another command called descending. You just have to indicate that you're sorting this variable in descending order. So in this case, Let's say we want to sort again month in descending order. So it's still the same thing. I'll copy this command. But now here, we wrap it. We indicate that we're going to sort it in descending order. And if we run that and look at our data set, let me just reload. Um, and let's put this in this in this a small data set. Um, it's the same. Okay. So if you look at it, uh, you'll be able to see that the month is sorted in descending order. Yeah. So it starts with uh, the eleventh month. Uh, going downwards until until Feb. So that's how you sort. You can either sort in ascending or you can either sort in descending order using function arrange. Any question until there? Yes, we have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, for example, we have a variable named month and uh, it has uh, the January, February, all the months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, so it has, it has January, February, so the, the months have been named, yeah, using the names then. And so how do, we, how, how do we sort them? How can we sort the, num the, 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 the months? You see, in your data set, you have the, num the, the months have been given the numbers 1 to 12, right? Mm. So, how, so, for example, if you have ja uh, January being 1, is one, being, 1 is January, uh, mm. December. So, how, mm. how can we sort that? How, in short, how can we sort like a string variable? Like a st you use, you use the same function, sorry. You use the same function. So, it doesn't just apply to numeric variables. You also use the same function for for character variables. So in this case, let me just put, for example, we want to sort uh, base. Yeah, or let me sort victim. We want to sort victim. I think victim is more repetitive. We want to sort uh, this victim variable. Oh, what's the name, victim. So if you look at this variable victim, now it's sorted. So it's one driver, one driver, two drivers, and then we go to drivers, drivers, then you go to motorcyclist, yeah? It's sorted. So you use the same command. Again, if you want to sort it in descending order, still the same thing applies. You just need to wrap this in this function called descending. You wrap the variable that you're sorting if you run it, uh, 
and look at your data set. So now it's starting with riders. So riders and then going at the end, you'll find the drivers now, yeah? So it's still the same command. The same command still applies. Any other question? No, no, any other question? I think you have answered, you have answered your question. Uh, we have one more question. Is what criteria, what criteria will the command use to sort the string value? Sorry. It uses the letters. So in this case, for example, R, uh, it's this data set. It uses the letters. So for example, R, if you're searching in descending order and you have, for example, something uh, on Z, Z will start and then A will be like at the end. If you are sorting in ascending order, any name that starts with A will start and then anything that starts with Z will be at the end. For numbers, again, it works the same. Starts with the first number and then maybe number nine, anything that starts with nine will be at the end. Okay, now how do we subset uh, We've looked at how we can subset our data using columns. For example, you just want to select uh, the columns that are of importance to you, but let's say you just want to check out some observation. For example, you just want to look at people who are aged uh, above 58 years. Let's say in this case of COVID, you just want to see how many people aged above, uh, let's say 60 years have died. How do you just select those people from that data set? Or in this case, maybe you just want to look at uh, how many, for example, you just want to have a data set, a sub data with only males. How do you check out that data? And how we do it, we use a function called filter. Yeah, sorry, let me just get back. We use a function called filter. And it works the same, the, the, the options are still the same as the other, other verbs that we've seen before. So the first part will be like, the command is filter. And then the first part is the data set. And the second part is now what you want to filter or what you want to check out. So for example, in this case, we want to check out data that details is equals to hit and run. And these are some of the operations that uh, you can use when you're filtering your data. So double equal sign is for equality. And then the greater than sign is this one. And then greater than or equal to. And then not is like uh, the exclamation mark. So for example, if you want to say something is not equal to, you'll use an exclamation mark and then one equal sign. If you want to say something is equal to, you use two equal signs, yeah? And is just the ant that we know, or you use uh, this, you use this sign. Uh, in your computer, it's just beside shift. If you just do shift and then the first, the first key, that's beside uh, your shift command, you'll be able to see it. And then sometimes you may just want to do like maybe string matching. You, um, um, you just want to match some numbers. So you use the in function. For example, you want to say, uh, find name Naomi in the list of all the participants. So you're going to use, let me just type it. You will say Naomi and then in. Sorry, in, and then the list of participants, let's say we have that data, yeah? Okay, and the is.na to check out any observation that has missing values. So in this case, in our case, we just want uh, details that are equal to hit and run. And we do this and store it in this object at some one and load that data, you should be able to get only details that indicates that the accident was a hit and run, nothing else. Yeah? 
So let's say we want to filter out only to have a data set for males. How do we do that? Again, still the same thing. Let's do it maybe in this data set and then filter. The first part is the data set, which is accidents. And then what do you want to filter? Let's use not equal to. We want to filter, for example, details is not equal to hit and run. Details is not equal to hit and run. Just copy this. Sorry. If we run this, hmm, where's that column details? If we run this, we shall not be able to see anything on hit and run because we want everything else other than these hit and run incidences. Okay, let's just say, for example, we want to to filter out gender is equals to female. Is equals to female. Mm, gender is not found. Oh, it didn't have an R. Yeah. So if we go to this, ooh, there's nothing, there's nothing on female. Yeah, I think I've specified it wrongly. I need to check that. Let me just check how I've named it. It's gender one, not gender. I think this gender, gender has just F. So there's no female. So the, it can't find this name female in a column called gender, that's why it has returned uh, zero, zero data set. But if I was using this column gender one, I think it's in capital. If I use this column gender one, ooh, what's the name? Another simpler way of looking at your columns, you can just put a dollar sign besides your, your data set, your data frame name. So for example, if I just want to look at the name or to copy the name, if I put a dollar sign, it will give me all the names of my data set and I can just copy the name. So if I do that, so this will only contain females. No males. So that's how you subset your data. Yeah, sometimes you might just want to, to remove duplicates in your data set. For example, you want to remove duplicates in your ID, your ID variable. And when you're removing duplicate, we use a distinct function. Again, it's still a deployer verb. So you'll say distinct. The first part is still the data set name. So distinct data set. And then the number of columns or just the column that you want, you want this function to be carried on. For example, you want to remove duplicates in a column named ID. Yeah, so you can do this distinct data set ID. But if you run this, if you run this, you'll only find one column. You'll end up with only one column, which is ID. So sometimes you want to, let me just do that practically. Sorry. So let's say I just want to, to, to check, to remove duplicates in terms of a base, motor vehicle involved and course, and course code. I'm going to remove course code just vehicle involved and base. Yeah. You'll see that my data frame dupes has less 
has less observation compared to the initial data frame that I had inputted. So this has 713 rows, while the initial one had 740. So around 20 something records have been removed. But if I look at this data set, it only has two observations. I mean two columns, which are the ones that I specified there, that please check, remove duplicates in terms of these and these, uh, these columns. But there are other times that you may want to still maintain your data, remove duplicates, but still maintain all rows. So what you do, you add here another option. You start with dots, keep all is equals to true. Keep all is equals to true. So if I run this command, If I run this command, I should be able to see that the duplicates have been removed, but I still, but I have all my, all my columns. So when you're removing duplicates, sometimes you just want to, to maintain your data set, to maintain all the columns that you have. So you put, you remember to add this option that dot, don't forget the dot. If you don't add the dot, you'll get an error or you might not get an error, but, uh, those other variables will be removed. So remember to add this dot keep underscore all is equals to true whenever you're removing your duplicates. So sometimes you might want to check out those duplicates and send them to maybe the people they failed to verify that. And checking them out, it's a bit complicated because we are going to use the bizarre commands which are not more, which are not as easy to use as a deplier. And here we do indexing. So for example, in this case, um, I just want to, to, to see the rows that are duplicated. So the first part, let me just write here. The first part when you're using base R commands is the data set and then the command the command here is the, or the function here is the duplicated. So it's the data set, then the function, and then now the row that you'll be looking at or the column that you want to remove duplicates. So in this case, I want to remove to, to, to check uh, if my data set has duplicates in terms of all the rows, I mean all the columns. So I'll do my data set, which is AXA, then the command is duplicated, and then I call the, the name of the data set again. This is, this is not so, it's, it's a bit complex, but maybe just sometimes you might want to check out those duplicates. And now if you look at the dupes, you will just find one observation telling you that this, this record has been repeated in terms of all these rows. Yeah, and maybe sometimes you might want to, to, to have those two rows because here yeah, it's just giving you like one row, telling you it's a duplicate of another value. But sometimes you just want, you want all the duplicates, not just the one that has been duplicated, but even the original copy. And it's still a bit complicated, but maybe, maybe I can just tell you what it does, but uh, later you can, you can practice it on your own. So still you're going to use uh, the function duplicated, so you call your data set, then duplicated, then you call your data set, and then um, when you're indexing, the first part indicates the rows, the second part indicates the column. So in this case, you're saying that you want to check duplicates for, this, for all these variables, in terms of all these variables, yeah? So this part, first part will give you like uh, the duplicated copy but you still want like the original copy. How do you get the original copy? So you add another, another command here again. So give me this duplicated copy and also the original copy, yeah? So this time you won't be starting from the start, but you'll be starting from, 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 from the end of your data set. So when it checks the duplicate, it starts from, from the start of your data set. So this will give you duplicates in terms of um, the first copy that it's fine, that it, I mean the second copy that it finds. Well, this one will give you 
the duplicate again in, in, in terms of the second copy that it, it finds, but now uh, from the end to the top. I know it's confusing, but sometimes you may just want to check them out. You use bizarre command, which are not so, um, so user friendly. Yeah, any question until there before we pipe our, our command, commands or we change them? No, we do not have a question currently. Um, uh, but uh, normally, please note we are running out of time. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, yes. Um, yes, this is the last section. Okay. okay. So okay. Sometimes, sometimes you might just, uh, you see, initially we just did like if it is select, uh, we just do like we write a command select and then you write another command rename. Then you write another command, maybe arrange. Then you write another command, um, maybe uh, distinct. So sometimes you might want to change these commands. And how you change them, uh, you use uh, something called piping. And the sign is uh, this sign, percentage greater, percentage greater sign than percentage. So how it works is that, for example, um, you see the way you can just change your commands like Naomi, I'm going to, to wash my clothes and then I'm going to cook lunch and then I'm going to maybe to go to town. So it works the same way. So you start with the data set. You say, using this data set accidents, I want to mutate to create a new variable called country, what we did initially. After that, I want to just select uh, some few variables, which is base, details, and months. After that, I just want to rename uh, this variable base sub to, to base. After renaming, I want to only have uh, just the rows that have hit and run. And then after that, I just want to sort my variable. So when you do this, these are the commands that we've run previously. So if you do that, you'll be able to see that now you only have data set for hit and run. Uh, the month has been sorted and the variables uh, are fewer than what we have initially. So that's how, that's how you chain your commands. Uh, the last thing is how do you summarize your data? Summarizing your data, sometimes you can just want to do summaries by groups. For example, in this case, you want to calculate number of accidents that happens in different months of the year to find maybe which month accidents happen mostly. So you use a group by, a function called group by. And in this case, we're just chaining our command. So we say, take the data set called accident and then group by months. So put all, for example, in your calculation, calculate all the accidents that happens in April, calculate all the accidents that happened in December, and then just count. Summarize. So this N into bracket, we are just telling you to count all the accidents that happen in the specific months. If you do some like that, we'll be able to see like, for example, most of the accident happens in, in July, followed by March, followed by August. So this is like a summary, yeah. So sometimes maybe you, ju you just want to, to find uh, most frequent accidents by type. You still do the same, check your data set, group by details, and then summarize the number of accidents that has happened. If you do that, again, you'll be able to, you can just sort this. You'll be able to see that most of the accidents that happens are maybe vehicle knocking down a victim, head on collision, then hit and run. Yeah, and that's all from me today. I hope you've learned something. So we have a small exercise. Uh, Lucy? Yes, we have, where, yes. Yes, uh, where can I paste this? Uh, can you send it to me via the, can you send it via the chat? Is it possible? I can or stop sharing my screen, my screen now. Okay, okay. Then okay. maybe I'll be able to see. Yeah, now I can be able to see the chat. Okay. So we will break out into, um, 
group of group of five five we'll we'll break out into a group of five members and uh as nomi will be yes nomi will 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 okay uh the group the sessions will be monitored um by all the all the our ladies organizers but nomi will be taking us through yes so uh in the next few minutes we'll be divided into the different uh breakout sessions faith you may go ahead Uh, sorry for that delay. We are still sorting uh, everyone into the different groups.
Hi guys, uh, we're just going to wait a few seconds for the rest uh, the participants to be back so that we can wrap the session up. Kindly, any feedback or questions, type it on the chat. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, thank you, thank you everyone for joining us uh, in today's tutorial. Uh, thank you, Naomi, it has been very insightful and educative. Uh, oh. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I'm sorry, we cannot hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yes, awesome. So thank you all for joining us uh, in today's uh, tutorial. Thank you, Naomi. Uh, it has been very insightful and ed educative. We have learned a lot from the deployer, the use of the deployer package, and also the base package. We've also seen some examples of how we can manipulate data also using the base package. So in our for our next for our next meetup will be on data manipulation in part two, and will be will be our trainer will be Kristen Okeo, who is a data analyst for Greenlight Planet. Yeah, uh, thank you all. Uh, we have actually extended some few minutes, but the the it's been an, it has been an amazing session. Yeah, so you can find us via our email address, our LinkedIn, and there is the Twitter handle and also the Meetup link. Yeah, uh, I think this is the point we say thank you all. You may leave the meeting, but in case you have any question, you can stick around and ask. We will share. We will share. We will share the the recording and the uh, the resources uh, in the course of the week, so that you may you may 
you may have them and have a look at them. Yeah, uh, have a lovely weekend ahead. Yes, if you have nothing else to say, you can leave the meeting. Thank you and see you next time. I see you next time. Okay, bye everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Bilha, and uh, uh, the rest of the team. We will see you the next time, yeah, for our next events.